Buenos dias, y'all. RGT85 here. Hope everyone is having a great day. But of course, we've got some video game news to talk about. We're going to talk about Xbox, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch. So everyone should love this video. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, and share the video. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. And I, I have to say it. I have to say it, and it pains me to say it, because I actually like the game. It's just there's not enough game for me to love it. And as each day goes by, I see more and more problems with it. And it's just like, this is ridiculous. But Halo Infinite is, is dead. Halo Infinite is dead. And like, that that's a strong statement. I was going to put it in the title of this video, but I didn't want crazy Xbox fanboys to be like, hey, we hate you, you're so wrong. But from an objective standpoint, Halo Infinite is, is, is dead. Like, yes, I loved the game when it first came out. I played it for like probably two or three weeks, like pretty much every night playing the online multiplayer of the game. And I had so much fun with it, but it always felt a bit empty. It always felt like it was missing a few modes, missing a few more maps, missing a few more weapons and things like that. And since this was going to be a game that was constantly updated, you could download it for free, even if you didn't have Game Pass, the multiplayer aspect of the game, that was definitely kind of concerning. The whole 10 year cycle of the game that 343 had said that they were doing with it, definitely very concerning. But, you know, we're in the beginning of February, okay? We're in the beginning of February. It's been almost three months since this, since this game came out. And they haven't done shit with it. Like, they haven't done anything with it. And it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. Look at the big team battle stuff. The big team battle stuff was just fixed. People were reporting issues with big team battle in the middle of December because I was having problems with big team battle in the middle of December. It is now in the beginning of February, and this was just fin finally fixed. What are we doing here, 343 Studios? Oh, I know what we're doing. We're doing all these damn cosmetics. We're doing all these cat ears. We're doing all these cosmetic events and hoping that people will want to buy these cosmetics in the shop to make money on this because it doesn't seem like they care about the actual core game. They 343 just announced yesterday yesterday that the roadmap for the game which i can't stand roadmaps for brand new games i like roadmaps for services if a roadmap is like hey this is when you're gonna get this game this game and this game okay i like that you're giving me information but as far as a roadmap for actual basic features in a game i don't like it but the roadmap for halo infinite has been delayed your co-op campaign mode delayed your forge mode delayed when is it coming out i don't know I don't know because they didn't say when it was coming out and it's just like how 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 did you botch this so bad like what were you doing for the past decade when you were allegedly working on this game where's all that money that went into this game actually going because th this game it, it it's, it's fun like don't get me wrong it's a fun game it looks good it plays really good but there's not enough stuff in the game to want to keep you engaged for long periods of time there's not enough stuff in the game right now that makes you want to keep coming back for more and more and more because it's a very bare bones halo experience and comparative to the other versions of halo that we've gotten throughout the years this is by far the most bare bones online experience we have seen with halo ever and this is going back to like the xbox the original xbox had more content had more game modes had more maps than halo infinite does and it's just like it's not getting better anytime soon the player base has been steadily dropping off of this game and i can understand why like i just there's there's no incentive for me to play it like we're already looking so like me spawn wave mbg uh dreamcast guy nate the hate like we like to just play like random online multiplayer games on that are available on game pass because we all have game pass but like we're already looking at other games to play we're no longer playing halo infinite and it's just it's a damn shame. It's a damn shame because this should have been a home run. This should have been an easy, easy grand slam home run. But instead, you like bun into the pitcher and the pitcher just picked it up and looked at it and was like, what the hell are you doing? Just throws it to first base and you're out. So I think that Halo Infinite in a couple years will probably be really good. But as the game stands now, it's dead. It is dead. And that to me is just absurd. If you're mad about this, it's tough shit because you know it's true at the end of the day. Next up, the PlayStation 5 might have had a shitty holiday season. I mean, there was really nothing I wanted to play. My PlayStation 5 is actually still in a box from moving back in October. However, that will be changing very soon because we have two games coming out in the month of March that are exclusive to the PlayStation family of systems. And I'm definitely interested in both of these games, one more so than the other. So these two games got presentations that happened this week. One of them happened earlier in the week. One of them actually happened yesterday. The first game in question is Grand Tour 
Turismo 7. Now, this game will be coming out on March 4th. Yes, it's been a couple days since the presentation of this video, but I really didn't have much to say. Like, I love the Gran Turismo series. Gran Turismo 2 is arguably one of my favorite games of all time. I, I, just, I absolutely love that game. And I've played most of the Gran Turismos that have come out. They've sort of deviated away from that mainline path, but it seems like they're going back to their roots with this. They're going back to the core. You know, you have the licenses, you have the ability to go to different shops and buy the cars and use cars. And there's more of an emphasis on the single player stuff more so than some of the more recent Gran Turismo games that have come out. It looks absolutely fantastic. The car lineup looks really good. This game will be coming out on March 4th, and I probably will pick this up on day one because at the end of the day, I really do enjoy the Gran Turismo games, and this seems to be like ticking all the boxes for me. It, it has all that stuff from the classic games, but it has enough new stuff in it. I don't like the fact that you have to always be online with it. That seems kind of wonky, even in the single player stuff. Granted, I am always online on my PlayStation 5 because it will be set up to my internet connection. So it's not like a huge deal or anything, but it is kind of strange. I know some people don't like that aspect. And, you know, maybe if your internet goes out or something and it's like, oh, I can't play Gran Turismo 7. I don't know, go play something else. But it is kind of wonky. The second game in question, man, I don't know what the hell's going on with this. I, I, I don't understand. I've heard people say, Oh, it's kind of like Doctor Who. I don't know what Doctor Who is. I thought it was like Doc or Doctor Strange. They said it was like Doctor Strange, but I think Doctor Strange is Doctor Who, who's like the, the British dude. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Ghostwire Tokyo. What what is going on with this game? It looks phenomenal. It's a horror themed game. It looks graphically just beautiful, but I'm watching the combat for this game and I still don't understand it. It's like elemental based combat. Like you do it with your hands. Like I talk with my hands, so I shouldn't really talk that much mess about it. But it's like, what is, what is going on here? It's like, we're, you know, it's like, you're like on a, uh, a construction site, you know, you're flagging people down to drive around it. Like, okay, go. All right, stop. Like, I don't know. The combat just looks very, very strange to me. I watched the full presentation yesterday. I still don't know what the hell is going on with it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not interested in Ghostwire Tokyo because I definitely am. But I think this is a game that I'm going to sort of wait for reviews for or see what other people are saying that I trust. Because for me, I, I don't think this is going to be a day one buy. But I might end up checking it out after all if the reviews for the game are really good and it sounds like something that I would enjoy. I have a few concerns about the game, but I thought the presentation itself was very good. It's not a bit confusing. It's a very Japanese horror style game which is fine because i like japanese horror style games but this is one that i'll probably wait a little bit to see you know how it's received how are people are liking it before i pick it up but playstation 5 owners that's two big exclusive titles for the playstation 5 in the month of march obviously a you know drastic change from what we saw in the last few months of 2021 2022 is definitely starting out very strong for the playstation 5 and i'm excited to see what happens with these games are you interested in either of these let me know in the comments down below i want to be the very best like no one ever was pokemon legends arceus will train me with my cause look look pokemon legends arceus i did a video on it last week i think it was last saturday make sure you guys check out that video but this game to me was what Pokemon needed. And I know there's a lot of people that disagree. Where are my gyms? Where are my badges? This game is pointless. You're wasting your time playing it. And I'm just like, shut up, shut up. Like, I get it. People like traditional Pokemon games. That's fine, that's fine. If you like traditional Pokemon games, that is fine. I am 36 years old. I played the original game over two decades ago. And really, the formula never really changed. Yes, there were offshoot games, Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon Snap, you know, games that sort of did things differently, but it was obvious that these were afterthoughts for the Pokemon universe. The mainline Pokemon games were all very, very similar. And that just bothered me. I was like, I want to experience something different with Pokemon. I want to experience something that I would have enjoyed and just fell in love with as a kid that gave you that freshness feeling. And that's what Pokemon Legends Arceus does. Make sure you guys check out my video on that if you haven't already i've been playing this game for well over 30 hours the credits roll around 24 hours i'm still playing it because there's a ton of end game stuff but pokemon legends arceus has done the unthinkable and i think this is a real wake-up call to game freak because it might potentially change their business model going forward now pokemon legends arceus was just announced as selling over 6.5 million units on the nintendo switch in just six days that is absolutely insane there they're, they're, they're a final fantasy 7 remake 
the original Final Fantasy VII Remake has not sold that many copies. Like, this is just absolutely absurd how well this game is selling. But the real story to me with this is the fact that this is Pokemon Legends Arceus, okay? Look at all the other Nintendo Switch Pokemon games that we've gotten so far. This is the fastest selling game that we've seen thus far on the Nintendo Switch and the Pokemon franchise. Pokemon, you know, beating games like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, Pokemon Sword and Shield, all that sort of stuff. Now, what's amazing about this is Pokemon Legends Arceus is one game. There's not multiple versions of the game to buy. You simply buy the one game, you get everything that has access to the game. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, that's two different SKUs. Pokemon Sword, Pokemon Shield, that's two different SKUs. So those games actually have two games coming out at the same time. And let's be realistic, Pokemon fans, especially diehard Pokemon fans, are buying two copies of that game because they want to have access to absolutely everything that they could potentially have access to. This is just how mainline Pokemon games have been. They've always released two versions of the game dating back to Pokemon Red and Blue, which really helped bolster sales for this series because there's two different SKUs. Pokemon Legends Arceus is one SKU. It's one individual game, but you, you took a leap. You know, you had some balls. You had some cojones with this. And he said, you know what? Let's try something completely different. And it worked. It worked. It's not a good looking game, but the gameplay is so damn good. It's like, to me, I'm the type of person where you give me good gameplay and average graphics, I'm happy. You give me good graphics and average gameplay, I'm bored. Like gameplay is the most important thing at the end of the day. Like, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a retro gamer and I've kind of, you know, grown up through all the different eras of gaming. But if a game plays good and a game is fun, I, you know, as long as the graphics are serviceable, I'm fine with it. And to me, Pokemon Legends Arceus is a shot in the ass that the Pokemon franchise needed. And I'm so glad that it's paying dividends. I'm so glad that it's the fastest selling Pokemon Switch game of all time with just one skew because it shows Game Freak that, hey, you got something special here. You got something that you need to build upon. Imagine, you know, the next Pokemon Legends game has, you know, much better graphics and has more things to do. There's a ton of stuff to do in this game, but maybe the, the side missions mean a little bit more instead of just like a random item or something like that. It's a great groundwork for the future of Pokemon, but as it stands as its own game, I think it's fantastic. I haven't been addicted to this game or uh, addicted to a game like this in quite a long time like the pokemon franchise you guys know me like i don't give a shit i don't care about those mainline pokemon games anymore because they just got so stagnant but you know game freak took a chance they they took a chance and it's paying off so shout out to pokemon legends arceus for doing the unthinkable 6.5 million units sold in just six days Alrighty, so that is going to do it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it please don't crucify me over halo infinite being dead Crucify Halo Infinite because it's dead. Maybe, maybe it'll come back in three days and be resurrected and, I don't know, actually have a lot of content. Let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, and share the video. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.